from the Middle East to America, from the society to the church. Boy, it looks as if we live in a world in which right is wrong and wrong is right. We'll do our best to set things straight today, right here on The Line of Fire. It's time for The Line of Fire with your host, activist, author, international speaker, and theologian, Dr. Michael Brown. Your voice of moral, cultural, and spiritual revolution. Michael Brown is the director of the Coalition of Conscience and president of Fire School of Ministry. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. That's 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Uh, My guest, David Pakman, is the host of the television, radio, and internet political program, The David Pakman Show. It's currently airing on over 160 television and radio stations. And David has been making the rounds in recent days because he interviewed four years ago the alleged Kansas City shooter, the raging anti-Semite Glenn Miller, or Glenn Cross, as he's been called, I've been on with uh, David a number of times on his show. We've had our disagreements. This is my first time to have David on with me. So, David, welcome to my program. Welcome to the Line of Fire. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, when you have to go, which will be in our second segment, you can do what I did to you the last time and wrap it up and say you got to get out of here, all right? Well, you know, I tend not to do that. I like to be a good guest and stay on until the host says, we've concluded the interview. (laughs) Uh, All right. Well, I, I... Got it. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I'll be conscious of your time. Uh, David, you've been making the rounds on major networks, CNN and others, discussing the uh, interview you did with Glenn Miller. The reason I wanted to have you on was because you spoke about religious extremists, homophobes, and then this gentleman in that same category, and you didn't seem to qualify it. So I was thinking if we could get you on the air that we could qualify some things and at least we could have a better understanding. So could you define for me first homophobia? Well, so I, you know, to be honest, I was hesitant to come on your show because the article on World Net Daily, number one, it, it has 20 comments after 19 hours. So I was like, do I really need to respond to something that nobody else seems to be paying much attention to? And also it had so many inaccuracies in it. But then I thought you've been a good guy by being on my show. It would be hypocritical if I turned down your invitation. But I think that. Oh, yeah, especially when I get so blatantly misrepresented and the comments that follow your YouTube uh, videos are the most extremist, hateful, bigoted, ugly comments. Some even wishing for harm to come to me. And that hasn't stopped me from coming on. So. Anyway, no back question. To- and, and of course, and of course, Michael, when you post to your page the interviews you do with me, many of your followers wishing the same on me. But I want to think if uh, about positive here, positive things. I think you may have misunderstood what I said. So let me explain. Not everybody who is against same-sex marriage is an extremist homophobe. I want to be really clear because when I went on these programs, they're four to five minute segments. You know how they don't give you any time at all. So I want to be really, really clear. If you are um, for example, you believe gay men and women should be treated just like everybody else. You have no problem with it being against the law to fire someone simply because they're gay. You think the term fag is offensive, but you're just not comfortable defining marriage or allowing marriage to be two men or two women. I don't think you're an extremist homophobe. I disagree with you. As you know, I don't think that that's the right position. It's an increasingly unpopular position if we look at the polling. But I am not considering those people to be extremists. The extremists are the ones who go around screaming that they or God or whoever hate fags. They support anti-science so-called treatments like ex-gay therapy. They say gay people are demonically possessed. All right, so so yeah, hang on. So you you threw in a whole bunch of things there. So I, I you, you're qualifying that some people are not extremist homophobes, but if we just come back and start with, could you define homophobia? And then I had a couple of questions about extremism, and you can comment on some of your own clips. It's The Line of Fire with your host, Dr. Michael Brown. Get into The Line of Fire now by calling 866-34-TRUTH. Here again is Dr. Michael Brown. Extremism is something that we've talked about on my program quite a bit. And whether it's religious extremism, homophobia, racism, etc., I'm interested in what's the source of that. 
All right, Michael Brown here. My guest, David Pakman, is the host of the television, radio, and internet political program, The David Pakman Show. And I've been a guest with David a few times already. Uh, David, I, I know you're super busy doing interviews, so I do appreciate you coming on with me. Again, my concern, that was a clip when you were on with Aaron Burnett, CNN. The word homophobia is used so freely. I'm constantly bashed as a homophobe because I don't endorse homosexual practice or homosexual marriage as being God's ideal or what I want to see in society. Um, there are people who call me religious extremists because I believe the Bible is God's word. Here we have a horrific situation with the Kansas City shooter who we all agree is an extremist, and, and we're both Jews. I mean, he hates us, regardless of our political or religious beliefs. Uh, and the terms are used so freely, and it seems in what you're saying, it plays right into that when, when you just you put everyone in the same class without ever defining or nuancing at all, which I think is pretty easy to do. So that's why I thought it would just be helpful if you could define what you mean by homophobia. I don't know how relevant it is for me to be defining words. I'm not the dictionary, but for the sake of picking something, I would say homophobia would be the dictionary definition, right? An extreme and or irrational aversion or fear of homosexuality in gay people. All right. Totally agree with you. So in your mind, uh, am I a homophobe? Uh, I don't know your full repertoire. I mean, in the, in the conversations I've had with you, um, that's the feeling I got. I mean, I'm not the authority, Michael, so I don't know if it's relevant for me to, to comment on that, right? I mean, uh, when I well, was speaking you... on the Aaron Burnett show, um, I, was, I had very limited time, and what I, what I indicated was I've spoken with extremists, from all of these venues. But as I said in the first segment, which, by the way, was like the shortest radio segment I've ever heard of on any show. Yeah, it's just an um, introductory one. That's how it is. Yeah, it's just um, it's not everybody who is against legal same-sex marriage is an extremist homophobe. I made that very clear. I would disagree with them, but that doesn't make them extremist homophobes. But, but you keep putting extremist homophobe together. Just homophobe, I mean, it's remarkable to me, and every time I've ever been on with you, and if you've read what I've written or any statement I've ever made, I've made perfectly clear that if, if there was any an act of violence or anyone inciting hatred, I would stand against it. I do stand against it, but I'm not going to redefine marriage based on that, on someone's romantic attraction or, or sexual desires, nor am I going to rewrite the Bible based on that. And for you to say, well, it could be homophobe, and then here, I, I just want you to hear what people are hearing. Let's play clip number five on Alan Combs, because to me... You're making things very unclear. And by the way, I can write articles that get viewed by tens of thousands of people, and I have 10 comments and articles that have 10,000 comments. You don't know by the amount of comments. But the fact is, I wasn't the only one wondering when they heard this. So I'm just looking for clarity. Clip number five. With all the extremists I interview, anti-gay, religious extremists, extremists, whoever it may be, I always think that they're very close to going over the edge from where it goes from just being rhetoric to being real-world action and violence. Yeah. So I wasn't uniquely surprised that this was the case, but when it happens with someone you've interviewed, of course it impacts you. Yeah, and by the way, you did a super job on that interview. Uh, it, it was chilling to listen to in retrospect, but I, I commend you for the way you did the interview and handled yourself in the midst of it, which is not as easy to do as some people might think. But can you see what I'm hearing and others are hearing that, that you are now suggesting that perhaps a committed Christian, someone like me, who is not going to hurt someone, I'd lay down my life to protect someone, that perhaps someone like me on your show or someone else, we might just be one step away from doing something crazy like this. This is what people are hearing in the emotional charge soundbite society we live in today. So you have the opportunity to clarify that for all of our listeners. I'm, I'm just not sure what the question is, Michael. I mean, I interview all sorts of people. You never know who's eventually going to commit some kind of act. I don't see the future. I just don't know what you're asking me. I'm sorry. Okay. When you say with all of these extremists, and you, right. then you mention anti-gay, Religious, you mention it without qualifying. So in your book, I'm anti-gay. If I just said with all these Jews I interview, I have no idea who's going off the deep end next. You know, well, that includes you because you were a Jew 
on my show. It's it's inflammatory. And when you look, you know the environment out there. I was just collecting uh, before the show here the latest death wishes on myself or colleagues. Here's one from from a, a gay man. Try that hate speech here, and you and I can see who wins at a knife fight. I would enjoy cutting your heart out. All right, to me, it's just rhetoric. But when you have that being expressed, you're not addressing that on your show. You're not having guests like that on your show. You're not calling them extremists. And and by general definition, if we hold to the Bible and oppose same-sex marriage, we're now homophobes. Hey, we may be the next ones to go off the deep end. That seems to be what you're saying. I mean, Michael, I'm not saying anything about anybody specific, but there's plenty of violence against gay people. So we know that there are some homophobes who commit violence against gay people, but I think you're trying to make a controversy out of nothing. I mean, there is violence against gay people, uh, and I don't know who is going to commit that violence. What else do you want me to say? I just don't see the controversy. Couldn't it be said, we're both communicators, we both have audiences, couldn't it be said, look, there are plenty of guests I have who differ with us on social moral issues, and they're not violent people, and I'm not talking about them, but there are these extremists, rather than painting with a broad brush. Here, let, let, me, let me ask you to respond. Clip, clip number two, maybe this will help, and I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but let's just try it one more time. Again, as you're on with Aaron Burnett, clip number two. We have a concern for your own safety. This is someone who, by the way, has been implicated in the murder of another Liberal Jewish, Liberal Jewish radio, radio host, host in 1984. He only served three years for that. Yeah, you know, uh, with all of these extremists, I think they're all on the edge of rhetoric becoming real-world violence. So a lot of, of people today have asked me, was there any sign that he specifically was ready to go further? We had the evidence from 1984 that he had gone further, but at the time there was nothing that made right. him stand out from the other extremists. All right, the other extremists who are, by definition... People like millions of Americans who believe the Bible and don't want to redefine marriage. We are homophobes in your book. We, homophobia is one of the categories of extremism that you mentioned. All of them could be on the edge. It's, it's complete, broad-brushed, totally non-nuanced, and it's going to create a lot of fear and further hatred. Uh, no, it's that, not broad brushed because it's based specifically on people that have been on my program. It's based on the threats that I get after I interview them that, that sometimes have to go to authorities. I, I'm not, I don't know everybody in the country, right? What I know is after the people that have been on my show, like Miller and others, have finished their interview, I get identical types of emails, tweets, comments and threats, whether the person on my view, on my show espoused an anti-Jewish, anti-gay, anti-whatever view, the reaction is almost identical. So I don't know who's going to do what. All right. Look, I've been, I've been getting um, emails or Facebook posts last few days, some Muslims responding to things I said with some of the ugliest stuff we had to actually ban them. And then the right, typical so you don't know gay rhetoric. Gonna, you don't know who of them right. is going to commit violence. And I don't know either. We all get but, threats and, and any of them might commit violence. Ah, but I'm always careful to make a distinction between radical Muslims and your average Muslim living next door. No, look, you could be the nicest person in the world living next door and suddenly burn the house down and do something crazy. Any human being could do anything. But I'm constant. Look, when I mention you on the air. When I talk about threats that we get and things like that, which to me is, for the most part, just empty words, I said, David Packman's not going to hurt. You know, no, I can't guarantee that. But I want to make plain that I wouldn't think that you would do something like that. Or as, as ridiculous as some of the SPLC listings are, I make plain, no, I don't think they're out to hurt me physically or something. I'm constantly trying to make that distinction. Would it be that hard? Just say, look, there are plenty of people who don't endorse homosexuality or who believe the Bible to be God's word, and they're, they're not homophobes, and they're not violent people, but there are plenty of crazy people out there. Would that be so hard to do? So if I understand correctly, I just want to make sure I get it, because I, I do want to communicate well and understand. You're, the reason for having me on your program, writing this article on World Net Daily, all of this, is that in a four-minute corporate media segment, I wasn't nuanced enough about the fact that not all homophobes will commit violence. Is that really the issue for all of this stuff? Well, first thing, it's a bunch of appearances. It's what's on your channel. It's pretty much the standard thing. And even what you just said, 
was inflammatory because you used the homophobe term again. That's uh, a look, term. If, that's, that's a term. Uh, uh, somebody who is a homophobe has an irrational and extreme fear of or, or aversion to homosexuality. It's right, which is not, which is not for the dictionary. Right, but it's not me. And now you put it on me. I might as Whoever well say... Who mentioned your name, Michael? I never mentioned your you name on in the any show. of those hey. appearances. You're very self-centered to think I'm talking about you. Well, David, God bless you, buddy. We're out of time.